Michael, what should I do? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Behave yourselves! Hello, YouTubers out there. This is Jerry Sotovia de Movies. So let's talk about what is actually film criticism. It's a very difficult subject to discuss, mainly because of some of the hate that has been perpetrated against Chris Stuckman, who is a film critic of sorts, I would say more movie reviewer than film critic. Let's just say he's a passionate film lover, for sure. And if you've watched his channel, you would know that, uh, that he not only indulges in reviewing movies, as he has for a very long time, over a decade plus, I believe, but he is also uh, he has also been lucky enough to make a, a feature-length film through an independent uh, an independent film horror film, and he feels now that since he's been making a film or has made a film and has worked on it and poured blood, sweat, and tears into it, he can't review films that are not good. So if he doesn't like them, he's not going to review them. And usually you could tell which ones he probably has seen that he's not reviewing and those he has seen that he praises. Now, there's really nothing wrong with doing that. Uh, there are people I've known who review records, uh, LPs of so all sorts in the past, who really don't want to waste their time on something they don't like at all. If it's garbage, especially. If it's mediocre or a new album, like let's say back in the day when he was alive by David Bowie, they certainly maybe would look at it for sure. But generally, they want to praise more. They, whatever they should lavish praise on is what they do, as opposed to reviewing just anything. Now, a lot of film critics do that. Um, of course, some review films that they, they don't like. But I guess what I'm saying is that there are certain film critics that won't waste their time on certain horror pictures, let's say, of low repute, purportedly, or anything, you know, they're not going to really look at Jeez, I don't know. I'm trying to think of something that's been out. Uh, Madam Web, I, I guess they, they may not even bother. You know what I mean? So if it's a comic book picture and they're sick and tired of them, and what can you say that's new about a comic book movie that you don't particularly care for? That's the point I think he was trying to address initially. But what he was really doing was talking about how studios, they put out their efforts, Marvel Studios, Sony Pictures in particular with Madam Web, and they put the writer and directors in difficult positions. It's not so much a creative endeavor as much as what the executives want to see on the screen. That's been going on for a long, long time. But there was a time in the distant past where movie producers uh, and executives would care about what it is that they're putting on the screen and entrust the vision of who it is that's making a picture with their money to make it happen. Movies now cost more than ever. Uh, some movies cost a lot more than they really should. Argyle, for example, costs $200 million. Madam Web, I don't think, costs quite that much. But it's insane the amount of money that's lavished upon these efforts. And so, of course, the more money it is, the more people you have to answer to. So that's all it is. So if you're looking for a very personal vision that you want to tell, and you need $200 million to do it, well, more than likely, you're not going to choose Madam Web to do it or any Spider-Man movies, but rather something more personal. And therefore, it may end up on Netflix or it may be a small independent picture. It's lucky enough to open in some theaters and then disappear before you know it. So that's kind of what I think Chris Stuckman was talking about. It's not so much that he feels he's against reviewing something that is negative in general, uh, a negative review of a film that doesn't work, but more... To the point, he is not going to do it. Uh, now, he could be selective and then choose to review something that doesn't quite work, but he can understand where the director is coming from and that sort of thing, because based on now his experience of making a picture, uh, he knows anything can can happen. I mean, there are people who probably may look at his film and say they don't like it, and that's just the way it is. Um, now, a lot of people on YouTube thrive on negativity. But make no mistake about it, those who are on YouTube who are reviewing movies are largely movie reviewers. And what they're doing is they are being subjective than ever, rather than objective. Now, you still have to be subjective in terms of how you feel about a film. 
but it shouldn't be influenced by the fact that, oh, it's yet another comic book movie and it's going to be terrible. Because if that's going to be your template and that's how you look at these movies, then you're probably not going to enjoy half of them that even come out. So why review all of them? That wouldn't make any sense. Now, there are YouTube channels that review mostly comic book movies, genres, sci-fi, that kind of thing. And they're not looking at smaller pictures, like I said in the last video, like American Fiction. Uh, or for that matter, The Holdovers. They should be, but they're not. So they thrive sometimes on the negativity before the movie is even out. In fact, once it's announced. Those are those people. And I think that's all Chris Stuckman was trying to say. Uh, in addition to how the studios treat your talent. Now, movie reviewers generally are very subjective on YouTube. Not so much historically, let's say, with people like Roger Ebert, although I think, uh, you know, Roger Ebert and Gene, Gene Siskel, you can make a case for certain reviews of theirs that were uh, certainly objective, but some that were much more subjective than they should have been. Not to say you can't let your feelings get in the way. Um, if you feel if you feel a film doesn't work and it's complete trash and you hate it, you can voice that opinion. But if it is because of the person that's directing it that you don't like at all and you never give them a chance, that's that's a little that's more subjective than objective. Um, there are a lot of people that do the latter rather than the former, which is to be objective. Now, not to say I don't fall into that trap, but I try to be fair. So. I give the same amount of fairness to, uh, let's say, God forbid, yet another Texas Chainsaw Massacre sequel or prequel or whatever, than I do with something like Barbarian from the same genre, but certainly far superior. But that doesn't mean I have to review all of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies to know that many of them probably will not work because none of them come close to the original 1974 shocker. So you don't have to review all of them. Chris Stuckman is purely about celebration of cinema. That's where he is now. So he's not, you know, how can I put it? He's not maybe uh, the most impartial film critic, I guess, in that sense, uh, perhaps. But uh, I don't even know if I see him as a film critic. He's much more of a movie reviewer. He's really talking about the feelings that you get from a movie. Um rather than the, the depth or nuance. It's not to say that's the case all the time, but that's kind of what I gathered from his reviews. Now, I don't know, maybe sometimes I have the same problem, I don't know. But I try to really base a film review on many things. Okay, so this is what I've always, I've, I've done this more in the last 20 years than prior to that. And that is to say, I try to be as descriptive as I can. That's very important. Describe your feelings towards a film, what the film made you fit, uh, think, or what you think it made you think, uh, what you get out of it as a totality, the experience of it, and do it with some depth and nuance. So that when somebody watches a review of yours, and hopefully that's the case of some of mine, that they come away almost seeing the movie already and say, well, you know what? Okay, he's giving me a taste of what it is, this, the experience, Positive or negative, I may check it out. You know, and um, a lot of people uh, also I, uh, keep in mind there are many people that, at least back in the day, if a film critic gave mostly negative or if there were mostly negative reviews of a movie, um, most people would go see it. <laughs> and if something got was exultant praise, they would avoid it. So this this has happened a lot in the past. Now. What I sense from YouTube, and it's mostly YouTube, really, where the issues lie, it's clickbait stuff. There are people that feel the need to, to do that to get hits because this is how they either make their living or whatever. Now, uh, they thrive on the negativity. Not to say they didn't that they're lying about not liking it. It's just that that's what they thrive on. And many of them that I see do not have positive things to say about most movies, so they thrive on discussing movies that they hate. Now, why would you always want to do that? There's got to be some other stuff you need to see. And if it's all comic book movies, well, expand your horizons and see other things, please. You know. So anyway, those are my feelings on that matter. Um, I don't know. That that's really what I consider more movie reviewing as opposed to film criticism, an actual critique that's dependent on depth, nuance and subjective uh, feelings 
typically over the totality of the experience itself. I want people to look at a film, or at least I try to, as an experience. And the totality of it is really what you gather from it. Not just, you know, I like three quarters of it, but the, the ending just pissed me off, and therefore I hate the movie. That makes no sense to me. Um, and it's not just YouTube movie reviewers. I mean, uh, Rex Reed had the same problem. He reviewed Killers of the Flower Moon. And what he, he gave the film three and a half stars, but he said it was mostly boring, and he kept nodding off and checking his watch. But he said that uh, it was just way too long, but, you know, three and a half stars <laughs> out of four, but it's boring most of the time. It just doesn't make any sense. So mo YouTube movie reviewers are not the only ones guilty of this. So anyway, those are my thoughts on the matter. Let me yours. Tell me what you think. What do you think about Chris Stuckman's video? I will put the link below for you to check it out. Um, of course, everybody's talking about it, and uh, I think it's worth uh, discussing, but I think he's being misrepresented. So um, anyway, let me your thoughts. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that uh, notification bell, and if you haven't subscribed, please do. I do have film reviews, too, on occasion, and uh, talk about film in general um, here and there, certain topics. I don't get to do as many videos as I want, but I'm trying to do more than usual, but... Uh, you know, I'm also working on a short film, so there's a lot of stuff going on. So anyway, uh, that's all i got to say about that. And this is Jerry Sadovia at the Movies, signing off.